كنا هلا على فكره ديزاين وهلا عم استغربوا انه انا عم بقدم فكره ديزاين مش كارن لانه هذا الموضوع بيتعلق بالموتور سبورت يعني رياضه المحركات وبس أن نحكي عن رياضه المحركات ما فينا ما نحكي عن البيك تبع رياضه المحركات اللي هي الفورمولا 1 ليش الفورمولا 1 هي قمة رياضة المحركات؟ لأنه الفورمولا 1 هي أكثر رياضة بيندفع عليها مصاري خاصة إذا عم نحكي عن التصميم ولا إن كان المحركات ولا إن كان السيئين فينا نقول. الفورمولا 1 هي معروفة طبعاً لأنه في 22 بس سيئ فورمولا 1 بسوقه بالعالم يعني إذا بدنا نحكي نشبههم بغير رياضة مثل الفوتبول أو الباسكت أو حالة في عنا كثير لاعبين وأتليت بكل انحاء العالم، بس الفورمولا 1 بتمسك لنا في 22 درايفر، بس خلينا نحكي شوي نحن شو بميز الفورمولا 1 عن باقي رياضة المحركات. أكيد في عدة قصص بتميز الفورمولا 1 بس حنركز نحن على التصميم الفورمولا 1 خاصة الأيروداينامكس لأنه اليوم بالأيروداينامكس مش بس بالفورمولا 1 لازم يكون عندك محرك القوي، لازم يكون عندك شاسيه مضبوط وطبعا الايروداينامكس المضبوطه يمكن كل السيارات بتشبه بعضها بس صدقوني في ديتيلز كثير صغار بيعملوا فرق كثير كبير The development process for Formula One car obviously starts at a conceptual stage, sometimes on Adrian's drawing board, sometimes on the different designers uh, within the aero group, uh, because obviously the aerodynamics are the predominant performance factor on the car. Um, concepts will be created um, and then we'll either run within CFD um, or within the tunnel. Um, and then from there the results will be analysed uh, and decided whether they uh, are to make it through to full-scale production onto the car. For an entire car, we usually start development for next year's car around about August, September time. So it's pretty much a five month window to develop um, a new Formula One car for a new season. Actually for 2014, that's a bit different because it's, there are some quite big rule changes. So we've started work a little bit earlier, but typically it would be a five month window to develop a new car. first race to the last race in the season, in the Formula One season, we did getting on for 30,000 design changes to the car. So on average that's about a thousand design changes per week going through the design office. We have an awful lot of rigs that we will simulate race situations and sometimes triple or quadruple the mileage that a component would see um, through a test cycle. So the sign off on any um, you know, safety critical component is, is very, very vigilant. And of course, from a reliability point of view as well, um, it's extremely important to test as many components as we can before uh, signing them off to go onto a race car. It's about deciding out of all the projects and all the things we want to change, what's going to give us the biggest bang for the book, what's going to add the best performance to the car for the time and the resource required. The development race never stops.
نشوف سيارات غريبة عجيبة عادة بس تشوف هيك سيارات نشوفهم بالفلومة نشوفهم بإيفانت بس إنه قليلا نشوفهم على الطرقات بهالفقرة حنشوف سيارات معاملة للطرقات وغريبة عجيبة واللي بيصدم انه هو السيارات ما نجحوا وما اخذوا سكسي مثل ما مفروض ياخذوا بنطلع هيك بتقول سيارة انه غريبة عجيبة انه ليه ما بدها تمشي انه شيء سبيسيال مش كل العالم سيئة منه خلينا نشوفهم سوا ونتذكرهم From a motion picture icon that failed to deliver to a concept line that lost a manufacturer $350 million dollars we're taking a look at nine of the biggest car flops in the history of the automotive industry Sit down and buckle up, it's gonna be a rough ride. Number nine, look up in the sky. It's a hot rod, it's a truck. It's an ugly combination of those two things. The Chevy SSR had a mushy suspension, so actually couldn't even be used like a truck. But on the plus side, you got a truck bed shaped trunk. Even with the later model sporting a 390 horsepower V8 engine, the sales were abysmal, and the SSR went the way of the USSR. The cartoony bubbled styling was about as aggressive as a stuffed teddy bear, and honestly, Chevy, we liked the El Camino a lot better. Number 8. Plymouth made the great decision to develop and market a retro hot rod styled for the 90s. Then they made the poor decision to give this modern hot rod a 3.5 liter V6. And as always, one bad idea deserves another. One automatic transmission later, and the Plymouth Prowler was born. Even with the 253 horsepower, it just didn't have the moxie of the cars it was trying to invoke, and it didn't help that the most common color was Barney Purple. Sorry, Plymouth, but we're pretty sure you peaked with the Barracuda. Number seven. If you're developing a car and you have to present it to the public, it's probably a good idea to actually finish the car and, you know, work out some of the bugs. Famously, during the car's unveiling, the Tucker Torpedo was very difficult to start and extremely loud. So loud, in fact, that Tucker himself instructed the band to play louder to drown out the clunking and sputtering of the ill-devised engine. The car did feature an innovation, the Tuckermatic transmission. This marks the first time a car maker was so vain as to name both the car and the transmission after himself. Number six, the Cadillac Cimarron answered a question nobody was asking. How can I buy a Chevy Cavalier but pay double the price? This is a failed example of badge engineering. They took a Cavalier, slapped the Cadillac logo in a few places and called it a day. We have a feeling they took a lot of long lunch breaks over at GM during the development of this junker. Whoever bought this car back in the day had to really use their imagination to trick themselves into thinking this was actually a Cadillac. Listen to that four-cylinder purr, said no one ever. Whether you take the Cinnamon Challenge or the Cimarron Challenge, you'll find yourself gasping for air after complete failure. Number five. This is the only car on our list that should have come with a corduroy jacket and a pocket protector. The AMC Pacer was the first car to delicately combine the styling of a frog's face with the elegance of a giant glass dome hatch. Heavy, slow, and well, just plain ugly. But hey, at least it had bucket seats. The Pacer finally earned its place in pop culture as the car in Wayne's World and more importantly, the hamburger car from Good Burger. Way to go, little pacer. You really made a name for yourself. Number four. Ah, the Pinto. The only car on our list to share its name with both a bean and a horse. Ford took what was great about muscle car styling of the 70s, lopped off the rear end, and made an Econo car that ended up costing 27 people their lives due to a poorly positioned gas tank. If hit from the rear, the gas tank could easily rupture and cause a death-inducing fire. The good news is it was available from the factory in dozens of different colors. Even with over 3 million total sales, the world will always remember the Pinto as the car that sometimes blew up. We're okay with that. Number three, the Yugo is basically the equivalent of taking your ugly cousin to prom. On top of that, if you failed to replace the timing belt every 40,000 miles and it broke, that would start a chain reaction of events that would probably destroy the engine. 
In 1992, Yugo America folded. But the rest of the world seemed to be a glutton for punishment. Because the last Yugo rolled off the assembly line in 2008. We salute you, you piece of junk. Number 2. Quiz time! What car lost Ford over $350 million by 1960 and had a grill that looked like it was perpetually sucking on a lemon? If you guessed the Edsel, you'd be dead right. This gigantic coupe was an economic disaster for Ford, which equated to about $2.8 billion lost adjusted for inflation. Of course, the Ford Edsel did innovate one of the most frustrating inventions of all time, the check engine light. The good news is, they didn't make that many of them, so you won't have to shield your eyes too often when this chrome Quasimodo comes cruising down your street. Number 1. Great Scott! The DeLorean is unmistakable with its stainless steel exterior and gullwing doors. However, it couldn't quite reach the 88 miles an hour that it was intended to. It was powered by a weak 2.8 liter V6 that only pumped out 130 horsepower and 0-60 to 60 time of 8.8 .8 seconds. In 1981, a DeLorean would cost you a cool 25 grand. That's heavy. The car didn't sell well at all, and then John DeLorean was arrested on drug trafficking charges. It was the 80s, after all. He was found not guilty, but by then, all that was left of DeLorean was two flaming tire tracks and a spinning license plate.